Hey guys, my name's Jeff. I'm making this video today to show how to change the speeds and adjust the head uh, up and down on my Jet JMD 18 uh, milling drilling machine. I made a couple other videos just showing some of its features and I have to change the speed on this because I'm about to use a standard woodworking uh, routing bit. It's a spiral cut bit, half inch, in a half inch R8 uh, spindle taper collet that's actually chucked up into my machine right now. Well, I need to increase the speed all the way up on this since I'm routing in, in lighter wood. I'm not, you know, machining heavy metal. Uh, right now, the speed is set as, as slow as it will possibly go. I need to actually move it as fast as it will possibly go because I'm going to be routing this MDF. I'm actually making a base plate, and I'll be showing this on some videos for this table itself um, just to show why it needs to go uh, down. Uh, this table has four uh, slots for T-nuts. Um, I'm going to try and get up close, see if you can see that. Um, but a T-nut has something that will catch in a slot and, and hold when a, thread, when a threaded rod is threaded down in it. So that'll slide in any one of these four slots. Well, I need to route some slots in my base plate here, just an MDF uh, standard uh, medium density fiberboard base plate. Um, I'm going to route some slots in it, move this into position, and then with these underneath, like so, I'm going to bolt this down, um, and then I can screw or even use super strong double-sided tape um, or clamp any type of, of, of lighter you know, woodworking or plastic working stuff to this MDF base plate. So that's, that's the reason we're doing this. So this is going to be the, the base plate itself, and th this will be like the, the working pieces or, or shem blocks or whatever it is. But for right now, what we're needing to actually route through is this base plate itself. So this whole head needs to move down, or else I won't have enough travel on my quill. It won't even reach all the way down there. Uh, my cutter won't. So I need to go ahead and move this down. And the way we do that is there are two nuts right here, and I showed them in another in another video. And I'm going to go ahead and I loosened the one already, and I'm going to go ahead and loosen this one. We'll see how long my, my ratchet holds up. It's a Craftsman ratchet, and for some reason it just broke in the last couple days. It's uh, slipping on me. Um, so you loosen those two nuts, and then just like a standard drill press, it has a handle on the side. It'll go up, and it'll go down. And we're actually going to lower this thing darn near as low as it'll go. And that serves the dual purpose of hopefully you'll be able to see on the video a little bit better. When I open the top of this and show you how to change the speed. So before we change the speed though, we want to, and we'll see if this ratchet holds up. Make sure that this is straight because it does have a decent bit of movement in it, just like a drill press. Um, it will move freely on the column, just like a drill press. And we're going to go ahead and tighten these down. It's a very large nut, so it takes a lot of torque. Um, it's a 23 millimeter. So. Now is when I wish my ratchet worked better. Okay, there we go. And that's now tightened. So now to change the speed. The way you change the speed is just like on a standard drill press. Uh, as you lower the head all the way down to get this cover to come off, you're going to need to actually take this piece and sometimes your digital readout will be in the way, that's why it's swivelable. Um, you're going to need to open this little door so it will clear the top of the column. And it will set over just like so. Um, hopefully you can see this in the video, alright. But you loosen this up just like a standard drill press. Um, and it, well, I'm sorry, you don't loosen this up, you, you operate this like a standard drill press. It has a driven pulley back here with the motor. The motor's in the same spot as, as a drill press. It, it hangs down behind the unit over here. You have the driven uh, 
pulley right there and an idler pulley in between and then you have a, a drive pulley right here that actually is directly affixed to the quill and will turn the, the cutter itself. Um, so what you need to do is you need to loosen the motor. This little thumb screw over here is what's going to loosen this side and then a 17 millimeter uh, wrench over here the, uh, the hinge bracket, and I went ahead and pre-loosened them, is held on by two bolts, top and bottom. You go ahead and you loosen these up, and, uh, and you'll be able to turn the motor. And it's very important that you, that you loosen these up, top and bottom. And then, a lot of times, you know, your motor's going to stick, so I have a large pry bar. And you can take this. and pry your motor uh, in and out and whatnot. And the goal is to go ahead and get the, uh, the belts off. Got to be careful of my dial calipers there. Don't want to injure those. It's a good quality stare at one. Okay, got those out of the way. And you would go ahead and just take the belt off just like on a drill press. And that takes a little bit of the pressure off. There we go. And you have your belt the, uh, from the drive pulley to the idler pulley. And where are we? Here we are. And then you take your uh, ratchet, and uh, it uses a standard 12 millimeter uh, socket. And you're going to loosen up the plate that the idler pulley swivels on. that will loosen the idler pulley and allow you to push the idler pulley in towards the driven pulley and it will push a lot and that allows you to easily switch this belt the driven belt and you push the idler pulley back like so um, now I forgot that I need to actually put the other belt on first because this one blocks it since we're switching. Uh, I had it set up on the slowest speed possible um, for metal machining and it actually needs to be set on the fastest speed possible because I'm going to be working with MDF, a very light material. Um, it's very dense for woodworking but it's very light when you talk about the capabilities of a metal machining machine. So, the belts are now in position. And, sorry, there we go. That actually just slides right in. Um, the speeds are, are uh, marked over here, just like on a standard drill press. You know, you've got your, your guide. Also, the manual is online, but this, this machine will come with the manual I printed out for it. Um, but the manual is easy to, to find online. Um, and then you would use something... You would use something... Sorry for the noise. I'm not sure if that's going to come across or not. Um, my yard is being cut right now outside my garage. Um, you would use something like Machinery's Handbook that has feed rates and speeds of whatnot. Um, and for each different drilling bit diameter, um, and different metals and, or plastics or whatnot, there's a recommended speed and a feed rate. How fast you feed the, the bit down into the material and how fast you turn the bit itself. So you'd use a reference like this to determine that. But right now, I want to operate at 3,000 RPMs, the highest rate this will go. And so we look at the, the belt position and it has a position of 1.8. Um, this top position from the idler pulley to the driven pulley right here is number one. The bottom position down here from the driven pulley to the idler pulley is position number eight. So I have this set to go as fast as possible. Um, we're then going to take, we're going to pull the idler pulley back as far as it'll go easily by hand. And we're going to take our pry bar and pull this back. And we're going to move our, uh, our motor back, tensioning the belts, and then we're going to set it 
with this thumb screw right here and it's going to set it into position and hold the motor in position that's pulling back on the idler pulley and it takes a little bit to get this screwed all the way in there we go and there's a decent tension on both belts we're going to close this up and then we're going to tighten these up and then you are ready to work at 3000 rpms as opposed to 150 which will it's going to work a whole lot better in mdf um, anyway that is how you adjust the uh, the belts for the speeds on the JMD uh, 18 milling drilling machine and also how you move the, the main head up and down and clamp both of them into position. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of videos of me making this base plate, getting the, the holes or the slots rather routed in this and uh, enjoy those also. Take care guys.